to the Cape Elizabeth School Board meeting for Tuesday, February 9th, 1999. And first on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. What the hell can we I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Next on the agenda is uh, adjustments to this evening's agenda. Any adjustments to be made? Seeing none, we'll move on to approval of the January school board minutes. <coughs> Any concerns or questions about those? Um, we will move right on to comments from our high school representatives. Good evening. Uh, I'm Jeff Butterworth, a Cape Elizabeth High School senior, uh, along with Alicia Chang, a um, high school junior. Uh, I'll let Alicia uh, present her uh, information first. Um, I, um, we had a school assembly last week basically to um, promote school unity. It was with all four grades, and I believe it went really well. It was really entertaining. Um, it was two men, and they were, their group was called Blink, and they they're very talented jugglers, and they came in and they just juggled a very like a bunch of different things, and it was just fun. And we're thinking of having um, a few more in the future to kind of boost school morale. Um, recently, there was a small committee of juniors that made a proposition um, to the school to make it easier for juniors to have freeze instead of study halls. And before, it was that you needed to be an honor roll to make to have freeze, which it means that instead of going to like a teacher for a study hall, a, you know, um, you'd just be able to basically go to the cafeteria or wherever you needed to go during your free period and do what you need to do. And the policy was was changed, and now it's you need it's you you can be on honor roll or you can have a 90 or higher GPA to have this privilege as a junior. And we would we would like to thank you guys for um, giving us the opportunity to be part of the um, process for selecting the superintendent of the school. We um, thought it was great to be able to meet the candidates and interview them and be able to, you know, put our two cents in on what was going on. And we appreciate it. Thank you. Before I present my information, I was on the committee, so I'd also like to personally extend my uh, gratitude for allowing us to take part in that uh, search. Uh, for the superintendent. Um, once again, I've only got good news for you tonight. We haven't got too many, uh, too poor, too many poor issues at the high school, so I'll start off with uh, a little bit of news on our um, uh, jazz band. Uh, recently, just this past Saturday, the uh, Cape Elizabeth Jazz Band performed in the uh, Maine Band Directors Association Invitational um, uh, Competition slash uh, uh, performance at Biddeford Middle School. Um, there were no official prizes handed out, it was more of an exhibition, but the jazz band was invited to perform with uh, the ensemble led by Scott Reeves up at USM for a concert in April. I believe that'll be April 11th or 12th, I'm, I'm not sure at this time. Um, uh, we will also be going to Berkeley this Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday for the entire day. That will, um, the bands participating in that will be Cape Elizabeth Jazz Band 1, Cape Elizabeth Jazz Band 2, <laughs> Uh, as well as Combo 1 and Combo 2, all different styles, all, all different uh, uh, musicians. So it should be a lot of fun. Um, the One Acts, uh, um, directed by Mr. Mullen, uh, have gotten underway. Uh, rehearsals are going very well. Uh, the, the show will be similar to the fall show, which was Three Stacks of High Variety. This one simple, simply titled Variety. And uh, they will be performing uh, at the school on the 12th and 13th of March, and then moving on to States uh, at Orono. Um, recently, we had uh, some, some students do very well at the uh, CFLs, a, uh, co a statewide competition for the speech team. Um, I don't have the list in front of me right now, but I thought I'd commend the team for their, uh, for their performance uh, in any sense. Um, 
commending performances again, we have boys basketball, who is seated number one in, uh, in the B division, which is our division for high school, uh, which is an impressive, uh, impressive feat. And so they are uh, favored to win the finals, uh, being seated number one now. Um, other, in other sports news, we have swimming states for both boys and girls. Both are seated class A. Um, and the girls recently won second in uh, North Southwesterns, kind of a confusing term. Uh, and the boys team won the uh, fifth uh, placement in North Southwesterns. So sports news from the high school, we're uh, doing fairly well. So thank you very much. Are there any questions? Have you selected or has Mr. Mullen selected the spring play yet? Uh, yes, actually, that's another good point to bring up. We're, we'll be doing the play uh, Tommy, uh, the 1960s rock musical. I uh, revolutionized the Who, so it should be fun. Uh, we haven't got the dates yet, but that'll be a lot, a lot of fun, probably late May. Any other questions? Questions for Jeff or Alicia? Um, just a comment uh, to both of you and, and uh, to the high school students. Uh, you mentioned enjoying being part of the superintendent search, and um, uh, needless to say, we've had opportunities to speak with those folks after they've had a chance to visit the schools. Um, we've gotten very positive comments about our school community, um, and specifically mentioned um, uh, from the candidates um, was the fact that they were impressed with their meetings with the uh, high school students. Well, we appreciate that. Anything else? Oh. Thank you. Thank you very much. Comments from our middle school representatives. Hi, I'm uh, Ma uh, Mary Ann Chapman. This is Amelia Wiggins. Um, <laughs> the eighth grade had their foreign language assessments for high school placement. Um, <coughs> last week and the week before went pretty well. Kids had mixed feelings about them, but I guess it went pretty well. Uh, there was a social two weeks ago at Happy Wheels for the fifth and sixth graders, and not only did the fifth and sixth graders have fun, the rest of the student council did too. Um, we also have been meeting with the superintendent candidates, and it has been a great opportunity. Um, I think it was really great to be included in this process. Uh, swimming started yesterday, the swim team. Also yesterday we had a spelling bee. The winner was Whitney DeSena and the runner-up was Abby Greslick. And progress reports came out Monday, uh, last Monday. Um, again, mixed reactions from the students, of course. Um, <laughs> the MEAs and CATs are going to be taken early March and the Valentine's Day dance went well, especially because the high school age pro AIDS project were selling Hershey Kisses, and we sold, the student council sold carnations also. Um, career, career day, we had that a few weeks ago, and that was received pretty well. Each student went around to three different um, professions and learned about them. Uh, the block scheduling went well. A lot of, there was a lot of comments that it was better than the last one because of the shorter periods and it had recess for the seventh and eighth graders. Um, for our outdoor experience funds, we're starting a magazine drive on February 24th and indoor track started on last Monday, I think. And um, the meets are now on Fridays for that other than last year's. Um, and so students can be on drama and on indoor track if they want to. Um, the math meet took place, I think, over the weekend, and Brant Amberger, Brent Amberger um, won with a very high school score. And the boys' basketball started and is going well. And the eighth grade students and their parents are going to the high school in, um, and learning about the high, from the high school staff the courses that they're going to take next year. Um, in early March, there's a music festival for the band and chorus. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Any questions for our middle school reps? Again, um, a thank you from the board uh, to those of you who participated in helping us with the uh, superintendent search. We heard uh, nice things also about the middle school and the uh, Pond Cove visit. So thank you.
Thank you. But I did hear that you were looking for a, super, a new superintendent who called off school for snow days more often. <laughs> that was the theme for the, uh, the questioning <laughs> at both the middle school and Pond Cove, we heard. That was, that was one of the common questions. Okay, moving on to communications. Um, do we have communications? Anyone? I have a couple. Uh, one is uh, Keith Witherell um, is home and, and probably watching. He's uh, home with the flu. We want to wish him a speedy recovery. And uh, a second item is uh, just for general information, nomination papers are available for both school board and town council seats um, starting tomorrow. Moving on to the, any other communications? <clears throat> Moving on to the superintendent's report. First, I have as a teacher resignation, Lisa Martin, who has been a teacher at Pond Cove School. Lisa has been off on child rearing leave, and she has decided not to return. We will miss her, and we appreciate her timely notification. Uh, second, my second point is that we have two celebrities in our midst tonight. Uh, one is Andy Strout, who has been named the national, national girls tennis coach of the year. And Andy's in the back someplace. <laughs> Maybe we could get Andy up to the podium to recognize him. Come on up, Andy. And yep. our other celebrity is in the sort of in the same category, and he's not going to be happy that I mention this, but uh, Keith Weatherby has been named the Maine Athletic Director of the Year. All right. Keith, you want to come up too? Keith has been trying to keep it a secret from us, but uh, he wasn't successful. It. I think the tan did him in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, Keith was the recipient of a trip, because of this honor, of a trip to Florida paid by Nike. So he's just come back from Florida. Well, terrific. Congratulations to both of you. <laughs> Thanks so very much. much. The next item, you do have in your packet a list of probationary teachers. Uh, probationary teachers are those who have been with us two years or less, and that's really for information only. We will make those nominations in May, but that's just for your consideration at this time. Uh, we had, as, as the middle school reps mentioned, we had our second career fair last week, and it was again very successful, and although Certainly many people played a part in that. I want to particularly recognize Gail Schmader, who is the director of our volunteer program. It's a huge job, and she does very well in planning it, great variety. And I know one of the things that always happens when we have the debriefing afterwards is that the people who are there always say, if, if every event we went to was as well planned as this, it would be wonderful. So she really does a great job, and I think the students appreciate it a lot. And Peter, uh, I'd like to call on Peter to mention a student at the high school who's received a particular honor. We did away with principal's reports tonight, but he gets a little piece of time. Uh, earlier in this year, uh, the faculty at the high school had nominated one of our students uh, for the Prudential Spirit of Community uh, Award which is uh, sponsored by the National Association of Secondary School Principals and the Prudential. Uh, it's a uh, program that, that strives to honor uh, students who have gone way above and beyond in the area of community service, volunteer work, and that type of thing. Uh, late last week, we learned that Stacy Pickering, who was our nominee, uh, had been chosen as Maine's top high school volunteer uh, of the year. Uh, and the, consequently the state honoree in the 99 Prudential Spirit of Community Awards program. Uh, as such, she will uh, receive a $1,000 award. Uh, she will receive a silver medallion later on and an all expense paid trip to uh, a series of national recognition events to be held in Washington, D.C. in early May. Um, just briefly to let you know the types of things that uh, Stacy was involved in that led us to believe that she was a worthy recipient and made us very happy to hear that those that uh, select this award agreed with us. 
uh, Stacy's main activity has been teaching uh, a domestic violence awareness course to high school students for more than three years now as a volunteer educator for the Young Adult Abuse Prevention Program of Maine. Uh, in addition to teaching the violence prevention, Stacy had helped to organize a march. It was a Take Back the Night march to call attention to the murdered victims of domestic abuse and has volunteered as an operator with a crisis helpline. To conduct her course, she develops lesson plans and skits that deal with oppression, violence, stereotypes, sex roles, and gender issues. She teaches as many as five courses a month, with each requiring a couple of days of prep work. We, uh, she and we estimate that in the three years that she has been teaching, she has volunteered more than 8,000 hours to this cause. Uh, we are very proud that Stacy is a student at Cape Elizabeth High School and join the uh, Prudential and National Association and Secondary School Principals in congratulating her on being named Maine's top volunteer in high schools. She will also be eligible for the national award, which will be decided at the um, time that, that they are in Washington uh, in early May. So I'd like to congratulate Stacy. Really well done. That's terrific. Great. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to committee reports. Um, we did not have a finance subcommittee meeting. Um, we had uh, other business uh, with the superintendent search that um, didn't allow us the time to do that. Um, we actually did sign the warrants that we needed to do. We did the, the business that needed to be conducted, but there's no other report from that um, subcommittee. Uh, next is policy subcommittee. Uh, we did not meet last month. Uh, that meeting had to be canceled, and we were unable to get everyone together again for a rescheduled meeting. Policy committee will meet this Thursday, <coughs> approximately 10:15 in the William Jordan Conference Room, and I recognize that some people will have been here for quite a while already and may have to get back to their buildings, uh, but we will proceed as best we can. Okay. Um, the next uh, is not really a committee report, but an update on the superintendent search. Beth? As you've heard tonight from the high school students, we have had a number of candidates uh, who've been back for a full day. We had one Friday, we had one yesterday, and one today for three candidates going through. If anybody is listening, the fourth candidate for this Friday has been canceled. Um, we will continue on with the process from here, and we will keep the public updated. Okay. Um, moving on to unfinished business, uh, we have a number of policies for a second reading. And uh, you want to walk us through those, Kevin? Yes. Um, Beth was kind enough to handle the first readings last month. Um, I will first deal with the special education policies. These policies, I would remind you, are simply an affirmation of state and federal laws that regulate our special education uh, services. Those policies are individual education plans, referral and pre-referral procedures, student educational records, notification of rights under FERPA, model procedure or child on child identification, <coughs> model procedure on personnel development, model procedure on parent involvement, programming in the least restrictive environment, special education independent evaluations, extended year services, and finally, suspension, expulsion of special education students. In addition to reaffirming the state and federal regulations, these are also the policies recommended to us by the main, uh, main school uh, association. Therefore, I would move that the board accept these policies. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion or question about the policies that uh, Kevin has listed? You're going to take the other one separately? Yeah. yeah. Um, seeing none, all those in favor? 6-0. The last policy under consideration today is the second reading of the Critical Incident Crisis Response Plan. I'd like to thank John for reading the full policy into the record at the last meeting. Uh, I've had no feedback. The, uh, the 
the Town Safety Committee meeting is continuing to meet, and I am confident that they will reach their goals in terms of the administrative guidelines. Therefore, I move that we accept this policy as written. Second, John. Um, discussion or questions about the critical incident crisis response plan policy? Seeing none, all those in favor? 6 0. I'm going to move on to new business, consideration of a teacher retirement. Yes, we've received notification from Sally Martin, who is a longtime teacher at the high school in the English department. Uh, we've, Sally intends to retire in June. And she'll be sadly missed, and I thought perhaps Peter might say a few comments first, and then if other people wish to make comments. But I do recommend that you accept her resignation with regret. I think there are, there are big shoes to fill and there are huge shoes to fill. Uh, Sally Martin is one of those people that is absolutely key to an outstanding faculty, a person that, that professionally serves uh, as, a, as a role model. Uh, Sally is the consummate professional uh, in her teaching, but more important uh, than just the effect that she has on the other professionals in the building uh, is the effect that she has had on 20 years worth of Cape Elizabeth students. I, estimate that that's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, of uh, 2,000 uh, students who I am sure communicate much more clearly, have a much greater appreciation of the written word and an ability to analyze it. Um, I think there's a parallel, a, a lot, uh, I think many people looked at uh, Michael Jordan's recent retirement and said, well, it's, it's, it's really good to go out on top. You know, if somebody that is really outstanding at what they do goes out on top, and I think the analogy could be uh, drawn. Um, Sally is an outstanding teacher uh, and is going out at the very top of her game, uh, but I wish I could convince her to stay. I mentioned to her that I might uh, suggest refusing uh, the uh, the request and see if that forces her to stay for another year. Um, but uh, in, in fact, I'm very happy uh, for her and her decision, but know that they will be huge, huge shoes to fill. Other comments? Jeff? Oh, While you Jeff? Up, Jeff, I just wanted to say I've enjoyed working with Sally on a professional right. basis on school board issues, and she will be very sadly missed. Thank you. Um, in, in, <clears throat> in light of uh, Mr. Dawson's comment about the uh, 20 years worth of students, I will uh, stand as an attesting uh, example to that. Um, I, I love Mrs. Martin's uh, English class. Uh, I, I was in the, her AP uh, English class period two last year, uh, and I feel that my writing skills and reading skills and a greater appreciation for the language uh, and the uh, technical aspects of it are greatly enhanced just by that, uh, just by that one year. And um, it, helped me, it helped to convince me that this year, or next year, uh, when I enter college, I will be um, entering under a communications major, directly resulting, in, uh, resulting from the class and dealing with uh, English studies. So just thought I'd make that comment. Thanks, Jeff. Other comments from the board? Both of my children have had been in Sally Martin's classes. I've known about her for a long, long time. I've gotten to work a little more closely with her more recently, and I would echo Pete's suggestion that perhaps we decline to accept her resignation. Um, more than that, I can't say, but I, I will personally miss Sally. I've had um, the opportunity to uh, get to work with Sally a bit in the earlier part of my school board career. Uh, found her indeed to be the consummate professional and um, enjoyed that interaction that I had. Certainly wish her well um, and wish her well from the board in terms of her retirement. I think we've uh, had a motion w uh, to accept Sally Martin's resignation with regret. I need a second. Should it be retirement or resignation? Retirement. I'm sorry, re I'm sorry, retirement. Let me. We, we haven't had a motion. We just had a recommendation. Okay, we need a motion then. I'll make a motion that we accept Sally Martin's retirement with regret. Second. Second. John. Other comments? Make a quick comment. Sure. May. Earlier in the month, the uh, student from Russia came and spoke to the Lions Club in town. She did an excellent job, and several of us were asking her, you know, what made a big impression to her in the high school. Well, she thought for a few seconds, she said, boy, I really enjoy Mrs. Martin's English class. Mm -hmm. So that's a good testament to 
young lady. Okay, all those in favor? Six zero. <coughs> Sorry, Pete. Me. Athletic fee positions. Uh, we have Wayne Bridgem, who is going to be a coach of the middle school boys basketball expansion team. We had enough students to add another team. Moving on at the high school for spring sports, varsity basketball, Roger Ryu and assistant baseball, I'm sorry, varsity baseball, yes, Roger Ryu and assistant varsity baseball coach, Scott Labby. And I just want to comment that it's always a pleasure to see faculty members assuming the coaching positions. And in this case, both the coach and the assistant coach are both faculty members. You want me to move on? Do them, do uh, why, don't you, why don't we cover them all? And then JV Baseball, Chad Bruin, and JV Girls Lacrosse, Susan Gifford. And again, Susan Gifford is a faculty member at the high school. Okay, and those are all the athletic positions. Those are the new ones. Then I have some returning ones. We have Ben Raymond, Varsity Boys Lacrosse, Jeff Thorak, JV Boys Lacrosse, Charlie Carroll, Varsity Girls Lacrosse, Andy Strout, Boys Tennis. I don't know whether, do you think he's qualified to do it? <laughs> Uh, Susan Ray, girls tennis, Jim Littrocape, I hope you pronounce it correctly, assistant tennis, Joe Henriksen, varsity softball, Doug Worthley, boys track, and Marianne Doss, girls track. Remaining to be filled for spring sports, we have one assistant tennis coach position, one assistant track coach position, and a JV softball coach position if necessary. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the superintendent's uh, recommendations for athletic fee position. Okay, second. Kevin, uh, questions? I just, I just have one question. Keith, do we have middle school positions for the spring that are still vacant? They will be uh, all posted next month. Okay. Other questions or comments? If none, all those in favor? <clears throat> Six zero. Co curricula? Mm -hmm. At Pond Cove School, Nancy Rollis to be a support team mentor for Eleanor Campbell. And you'll recall that we do those generally earlier, but Eleanor was hired into the school year, and so that's why she's just getting a uh, support team member at this point. And at the high school, Michael Hofheimer to be the second semester art club advisor. Is there a motion, Kevin? I move that we accept the recommendations for co-curricular positions. Uh, second. Um, and any questions or comments? It was seconded by Marie. Questions, comments, seeing none, all those in favor? Six zero. <coughs> Moving on to the sabbatical leave proposal. As you will recall, we had one request for a sabbatical leave for the 1999-2000 school year, and that was Gail Packer, who was a middle school teacher. And the committee, the sabbatical committee has met with Gail. The sabbatical committee is her building principal, Nancy Hutton, myself, and Marie Prager representing the school board. And she has presented her proposal, which we have approved. And Marie perhaps might like to comment on it. And Gail is also here to answer any questions that the board might have. Okay. Um, Gail has been <coughs> teaching in the, in the Cape Middle School since 1970 and is currently a history teacher. Um, she feels that there is a lack of connection with many students in studying history. Her sabbatical project will enable her to do research and gather first-person accounts for teachers, students, the teachers and students to explore. I'd like to read one part from the letter that she wrote. Um, now a teacher of history, I see the same lack of connection in many of my students. I have found that one of the fastest ways to create a bridge between student lives today and the lives and events of the past is to make those past lives and events real to them rather than words and faces on a textbook page. Um, and, and that kind of um, puts together what her research and writing um, <coughs> will be about. She will be um, researching main newspaper front pages and stories correlated to major or pivotal events and issues in American history, conduct primary source interviews on selected events and issues, and connect to main state um, learning results. Some possible inclusions might be um, historical explorations. Um, so, and I'll just give you a few examples. 
such as um, Lewis and Clark expedition sites, Benedict Arnold trail sites, um, Iroquois uh, excavation. Um, finally, what she will be bringing back to the middle school at the conclusion of her sabbatical will be um, videotaped interviews, um, primary source topic packets, um, primary source folders, and an index of interviews, packets, and folders um, for all of her research and writing, which will be available um, at the library. And similarly, for the historical explorations, um, videotapes, teacher support materials, and um, documented connections to the middle school curriculum and the main state learning results. Okay. Um, are there questions for Marie or for Gail? I think we, do, we need a motion. Okay. Um, I Marie? recommend that we accept um, her proposal for her sabbatical leave for the year 1999-2000. Okay. Need a second? Second. John? Um, any questions or comments? I, I have one. Gail, it looks great. Um, I, I, was, I was very excited reading. I wanted to kind of do it with you if I could. Um, it take a little assistance. If you, need a, if you need a research assistant, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do that in my free time. <laughs> no, it looks terrific. It looks really exciting and a lot of fun. Um, any other comments? Uh, seeing none, all those in favor? That's <coughs> zero. It's very good. Moving on. I'd like to do the nominations for administrative positions for the school year 1999, the year 2000. And the principals, we have Tom Eismeyer for Pond Cove School, Nancy Hutton for the middle school, and Peter Dawson for the high school. At the assistant principal level, we have Mala Bono for Pond Cove School, Carmen Melito Middle School, Dwight Ely at the high school. And then we have four district-wide administrators, Claire Labrie, Director of Special Ed, Paulina Portria, Business Manager, Keith Weatherby, who is a .75 athletic administrator, and Sue Weatherby, Community Services Director. Okay, is there a motion? I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for administrators. Uh, second. Kevin, comments, questions? Yes, Marie. Um, I have a question on um, yearly reviews for the administrators. Are they done um, at the same time every year and put into files, or are they done from their time of employment? Basically, they're done the same time every year. Uh, this year, the process is a little different in that it's going to be based on the goals that they set for themselves at the beginning of the year rather than a more generic kind of evaluation. So for this year, they've not been done no, yet? No, because it's based on the goals. And, and what about the um, new employees? When are they first reviewed? This will be the first time for the two. So are they reviewed? They're evaluated yes. every day, every minute to some extent. But you're talking about a written review. A written review. Right. Is that done three months after they're on the job, six months? No, there's, no, there's no specific time. It's really an ongoing kind of approach. Other questions or comments? Just make one comment. I, um, I, I feel that it's a privilege um, to work with such a talented um, administrative team. It really is a pleasure and, and indeed an honor to have uh, the team that we have together. It's, um, it makes, makes all of our jobs much easier and uh, it certainly enhances the, uh, the education that we provide to our students here. So just a, a note of appreciation to the team. And the board has mentioned that they don't get to know the assistant principals quite as well. So next That's month, true. when we do our administrator's reports, we're going to have the assistant principals do them. They didn't know that till right now, but they now know, right? So there'll be three different people next month. Um, okay. Other comments, questions? Seeing none. All those in favor? Six zero. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before we consider the superintendent's request to enter executive session to discuss a no negotiations issue and the superintendent's search, I'd like to uh, just review the upcoming dates. What time is it? My goodness. Oh, record. <laughs> All right. 
someone make note of this. I will, um, don't worry. Um, no, it's because we did let the principal speak to this. Okay, let's, let, let's first get through it, and then we'll, then we'll, make, then we'll record it. Um, this Thursday, uh, Kevin, the 11th of February, um, is the rescheduled policy committee meeting, 10.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room. Uh, school board special meeting Friday, February 12th. Is, would cancel. Has been canceled. Okay. School board workshop Tuesday, February 23rd at 7 p.m. at the high school library um, is on, and the topic is report by Marianne Casey on her sabbatical leave, and other topics will be announced. The school board budget workshop meeting is on all day, Saturday, March 6th, and that will be in the council chambers from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Then the regular finance subcommittee meeting will happen on March 9th, 99 at 6.30 p.m., uh, followed by the regular school board meeting, um, the first in the conference room, the second in the council chambers, and that will be followed by a budget workshop meeting. So it's a busy, busy agenda of meetings. George, we're also going to add one probably during the week of March 1st or 2nd. Second, March 2nd, um, as we move on with the superintendent search. Search, okay. We'll keep people updated and we'll post that. <coughs> it will be an executive session. Um, and now a motion uh, to enter executive session to discuss a negotiation issue and the superintendent search. So moved by Kevin, second. Uh, Jen, and discussion questions, seeing none, all those in favor? Six zero. Now we record it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. I think they feel short change.